What's up, what's up, what's up everybody? I'm coming to you from the TA Express here in Grand Junction, Colorado. That's where I'm at, yeah. There we go, yeah. Um, today I'm gonna do a little, something a little different. Um, somebody, I got a request to talk about purchasing my Fitzgerald Glider Coronada. Um, I will go over that. But first, I'd like for y'all to like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you'll get a notification whenever I get a new video coming out. But if y'all will stay tuned and bear with me for just a moment, I'll be right back. YouTube. This is the Tourette's Trucker coming at you from TA Express in Grand Junction, Colorado. As I can see, kind of see the mountains in the background back there. As you can see, TA Express. <laughs> anyway, I got a request from someone. So I'm gonna try to tackle that request, y'all. Just hang on, I'll be right back. Everybody, we're back. First and foremost, I would like to thank some of my new subscribers here. Let me get them here. Um, subscriber Angela Haas, uh, George Drake, and YouTube trucker Zach Bell. Um, he has a channel himself, so I'd like to say thank you for, for those latest three subscribers. I'm going to start giving a shout out to the people who subscribe to my channel, but you have to make your profile public, otherwise I don't know you subscribe. So people, if you subscribe to my channel, please go ahead and um, make your profile public so I can see it and I will give you a shout out to your channel. Um, one thing I did get, I did get me some masks for my channel. You can see, eh, maybe not. It's green, has my Tourette's Trucker logo on the side right there. This one here has, this I'll actually put some pictures here in the description. So, if I go in places, I can wear my green mask. It's got my Tourette's Trucker logo here. It says, watch us on YouTube, Tourette's Trucker. Then I've got my black one here. Same thing. I'll put a picture of this one in here. Tourette's Trucker logo, watch us on YouTube, the Tourette's Trucker. So, now I've got masks to help promote the channel, y'all, so I can stay keep people safe so they're not freaking out about my COVID, me spreading COVID. And I can help promote the channel at the same time, y'all. So, I ordered these from Vista Prints. Um, they were like 16 bucks a piece, um, special print. So, that's cool, I got green and black. I got some for me, I got some for the wife. Um, my son actually wanted one to wear to school, so I gave him one to wear to school. So, it's all cool. Okay, anyway. The truck I have is a 2016 Fitzgerald Glider Coronada. Um, actually, when I pulled it up, it's actually got a 1996 Detroit um, D60 motor in it. Now, when I went and ordered it, back then, I didn't hear a bunch of the complaints. All I saw and heard were the positives of the in-house motor. Now, when you go to order your Fitzgerald truck, there is a difference. There's two types of trucks, or two types of motors. Back then, only thing they had was the Detroit D60. Now they've got the the Cat motor, and then they've got the Cummins N14. But back then, only choice option you had was the Detroit D60. Um, but they had an in-house motor and a factory rebuilt. Factory rebuilt comes straight from Detroit. The in-house rebuilt was rebuilt by Fitzgerald 
um, they supposedly tweaked a little bit put different injector package in it bigger oil cooler a different fan hub and all that uh, different something else now on mine since I was going to originally pull a tanker with it I got a mid roof I was eventually going to pull a tanker with it so I ordered it with the eco per extra oil um, filter system the fast fuel system and also with a two-stage air compressor um, on the motor so I got a double piston air compressor so mine puts out good air when I need it um, also the thing I did not know was the problems with the in-house motor so when you buy the buy the truck you have to put a five thousand dollar down payment down on it so I gave them a check for or wired them or however I did it the five thousand dollar for the down payment sent them that then they ordered the truck um, let me know when one was coming out. I actually wanted a purple one but they didn't have a purple one coming in that year it would have been in 2017 before they can get a hold of a purple one I would have loved to have had that man I would have loved to have the purple one but I still it for green they had a green one coming in in um, the beginning of October and they could have had it ready for me but by the middle of October so that's what I did um, but had I known the problems with the in-house motor I would not have got the in-house motor overall I like the truck I mean it's a nice owner operator looking truck you can deck it out um, but the motor is the issue with that motor within five months the wrist pin bolts broke I went to go get the oil changed one time at the TA and the guy come in there the guy was like um I need to come look at something he said he couldn't get the oil to drain it was barely trickling out so he stuck his finger up there whenever he pulled the drain plug down bolt come out it was one of the wrist pin bolts on the bottom half of the motor so I had that issue then later on about another year later I had another issue had to have it set now with wrist pin bolts they had me take it since I lived at the time in Brunswick Georgia they had me take it to um, Detroit Diesel or something, whatever it is, or WW Diesel, something, WW Diesel, something like that. I'll I have laundry in the washer here at TA, so. Y'all, I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I'm back. Uh, good mug of drink. I will admit, on my resets, I go full fatty. I don't worry about the diet. I'm drinking diet drink. Full blown cherry Coke, even though I'm trying to avoid coke because you know go woke go broke coke is promoting you can't us white people should be ashamed of being white I can't change my skin color just like the black people can't change their skin color Chinese can't change their skin color American Indians can't change their skin color so trying to avoid coke products but it's all good okay anyway back to the truck so I had issues with the truck it's all been internal now I actually paid the extra five thousand dollars because the Fitzgerald truck comes with a three-year 300,000 mile warranty so I paid five thousand extra for a five-year 500,000 mile warranty well there was something else something else happened cost a couple thousand dollars something in the sleeves or the pistons or something because or the cylinders because there was all kinds of scar in the cylinders something had come loose oh yeah that was the third thing the second thing was the accessory drive teeth we found accessory drive teeth in my oil that was the second thing first was the wrist pin bolts second was the accessory drive then the third was something where they found pieces in the centers and scars so that was something so I did get my money thank gosh I did have the warranty but here's here's the big kicker 501 I had to have the motor rebuilt 
it kept building pressure and kept building pressure in the freaking coolant pushing the freaking coolant out um i mean you go to every time i turn around you know a freaking puddle of coolant in the ground where it was pushing it out the overflow so that sucked they would not cover it 501 i had to have the motor rebuilt with the in-house motor now luckily where i was at it was a one terminal shop um M. Gibson Trucking. Hey, he's a great guy. He's actually looking for work right now. or looking for drivers. Um, it's a hazmat tanker. They pay astronomically good rates. For our owner operator, you're looking between, you know, two to four dollars a mile to the truck for, for hazmat tanker. But, you know, I had an accident in Virginia um, along with like four other cars and all that stuff. There are some issues going on. And insurance company said, eh, he's gotta go. Um so I'm not I'm no longer there. But he's a great guy. Now he has a it's a one terminal shop, one terminal company, but he's got a like a five or six bay repair shop with a paint booth. He's actually a Landstar authorized repair shop. They rebuild motors. He got his mechanics from like Caterpillar, Peterbilt, things like that. So he's got great mechanics. They actually rebuilt my motor um, for me. When they took it apart, all the internals were aftermarket parts. There was no Detroit on the inside of that motor. So when Fitzgerald rebuilt the motor, they did not put anything Detroit back inside of it. So that is the downside to the in-house motor. So if you do get a Fitzgerald glider truck, make sure you get the factory rebuilt motor not the in-house motor now to an extent i wish i would have got a different truck um i actually talked to a guy who has the kw the aerodynamic kw that fish turtle sells he got a caterpillar in there he was actually getting 7.6 miles to the gallon my coming here from I left Bowling Green, Missouri, or Bowling Green, Kentucky, excuse me. I'm here in Grand Junction, Colorado. Right now I'm sitting at 5.1. I've only got 10,136 pounds in the box, but I'm sitting at 5.1. Now granted, the wind was bad, but generally on flat ground, like if I'm running up and down 95 or running through pretty level ground with say 43,000, I'm only going to get like 5.4. That's all I'm going to get. So the fuel mileage sucks. I don't know if it's... Now granted, I know the Coronada. It's not an aerodynamic truck by no means. It's not going to get good fuel mileage. It's got that nice flat hood that's going to like parachute. Like poof. So yes, I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to get shitty fuel mileage. But I was hoping for a little better. I mean, you know, they advertised in the sixes i mean sometimes i barely get six empty so you know it's just it all depends but now would i have done a different route yes i would have still got a fist drilled but i may have gotten a different truck um i actually really would have liked to have my dream truck is actually a W9. I'd love to have a W9. Granted, it's not aerodynamic either, but it's got a bigger sleeper. If I get my own authority, I may go go opt for a W9. If I get my own authority, I can choose what I want for freight. So I can make sure I pull light stuff so that I'm good. And that may be my course of action you know, in the future. But, you know, the sleeper's just really not, I wish the sleeper was a little bit bigger. It's a 70 inch sleeper. I wish it was a little bit bigger. Um, but granted, it's bigger than the Volvo I originally had, which is only a 62-inch sleeper or 60-inch sleeper. This is a 72 or 70-inch, 70 70-inch, 70 72, I don't know. But still, I still wish it was bigger. But yeah, I may have opted for something a little more aerodynamics, something where I can get some better fuel mileage and some better profit. Now granted, I have not had the truck tuned because when I went to go try to have it turned up or whatever, the guy said, um, this is a fish trail, did not I? I said, yeah. He's like, no. He's like, I'll do it, but I do not recommend you turn up a Fitzgerald truck. 
They said Fitzgerald has the motors wound so tight, he's heard too many horror stories. They they tweak it, they turn them up, blow the motor. So that's probably because they didn't have any Detroit parts on the inside of it. But he said, now that I've got all Detroit parts back inside, it's not so bad to think about having it turned up now. So that may be a possibility for the future to you know go ahead and get it turned up. See if maybe I can. There's always that thing, more horsepower makes, they say the engine has to struggle less, so you get better fuel miles, and other people say, well, when you turn it up, you're gonna burn more fuel. So, I, I don't know. That's, I have a plate. Anyway, y'all, that's my story with the Fitzgerald. Now, one thing you do need to keep in mind, if you get a Coronada, it's not an aerodynamic truck. So, the winter time sucks. Winter time is bad. Since it's a square and you got the headlights in a cavity, let's go up there and show you this. But since the headlights on the Coronado are in a cavity, the snow builds up. When the snow comes in, it builds up and it packs in there and completely covers your headlights. Um, it'll build up, it'll ice over, and you won't be able to see. So, your best bet is you get heated headlights. Um, get the ones that actually heat up because as you can see, you can see the cavity here. So it'll all build up in this cavity right here and then just totally block the headlight where you can't see. So now these aren't the heated headlights right now. I took them out um, at the end of last winter when one of them went out and I didn't replace them. And I actually wish I would have replaced it because um, this winter here I was coming down with the load and I had to jump out I was coming from northern Nevada Idaho we're in Idaho or Nevada somewhere but it was out a two-lane road the snow kept building up and building up and I was on a two-lane road. It was awful. I had to wait until nobody was behind me. Stop in the middle of the freaking road. Hurry up. Jump out. Clear my freaking headlight off real quick. And then daggone get back and get going again. Because there was nowhere to pull over to do, safely to do it. So that is the downside to the Coronada. Unlike the aerodynamic trucks, you know, the snow just, just goes, just covers right up over the top of the whole sealed headlight. I mean, but since this is recessed in, the snow just packs in and just ices over. So think about that if you get a Coronada. Um, think about getting heated headlights for the winter time because now if you have the regular headlights, it's no big deal, but I have LEDs. LEDs don't produce any heat, so there's nothing to melt the snow. But now if you got the regular headlight bulbs, they generate enough heat that'll actually melt it. But if you change to like I've got the 5K um, LED headlights where you can actually see. But now I do have mine adjusted down. Because when I actually flash my brights, they don't even reach up to the truck in front of me's mirror up top. They stay on the freaking road. Same through my low beams. So keep that in mind. Make sure you adjust them so that you're not blinding people if you get the... You know, the 5Ks, the, the bright whites, or the natural pure white, whatever. Because I want light on the road, but I don't want to blind people, so I actually adjust to mine. They say, like, if you get 20, like, pull it to a wall, get 28 inches, or, like, if your headlights are 28 inches up, it should be 28 feet away from the wall, or whatever, however, however it goes, and then your headlight... Or maybe it's 20 feet from a wall, something like that. But it might be 20 feet from a wall, and whatever your headlight is, if your headlight's 28 inches up, that should be where the center of your beam is on the wall, something like that. But look that up, adjust them so you're not blinding people. But yeah, um, definitely think about heated headlights for the winter time if you get the LEDs, which I swapped the LEDs because I like to see. So keep that in mind. Anyway, y'all, this concludes my video on my core not experience. For the future, I may pick something else. But in the meantime, I've only got 12 or 13 more payments and it's paid for. So, hey, it's all good. Then I'll work on something else after that. Y'all have yourself a good weekend. Catherine, I love you. 
I miss you, baby. Can't wait to come home and end of March. Let me see you. We're gonna take some time off. We're gonna we're gonna do our thing and have some good safety safe time. It's some good fun time to do something. Anyway, y'all, y'all stay blessed. Give Jesus Christ all the glory and all the praise for allowing you to wake up, have a breath in your lungs, y'all. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, y'all. Peace out.